Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this really exaggerated picture of Crony from Hololive. So, this artwork is extremely stylized and exaggerated, like the proportions are just kind of crazy out of control, to the point where I lovingly call this artwork Crony Kardashian, <laughs> because the, the proportions are unrealistic, we're just going to be honest with that. Um, but I definitely had fun making it, the, the goal was to... to draw something extreme and I I succeeded um, now whether or not it's appealing is up to the eye of the beholder it, it's definitely not something that I think uh, everyone will like and that's okay uh, even I while making was like this is a this is ridiculous <laughs> but um yeah also while we're on the topic of uh, of this artwork, I'm I want to explain this because I there seems to be a bunch of I I'm guessing they're younger viewers who are um, on TikTok and YouTube who are children who and I I believe they're children I don't actually know I'm just assuming who don't understand the concept of sketching and line art. So I've had people on TikTok and YouTube say things like, why are you tracing uh, another artwork? And it's like, well, I made the sketch. And the point of a sketch is it's a rough draft. The point is to plan an artwork with a sketch. It's the same thing with uh, writing where you make an outline to plan out your story in advance. The point of line art is to refine and finalize the lines of your artwork and the point of the sketch is to help guide the line art and the finished product so it, it is funny whenever you see someone who doesn't quite understand art say that that's the same thing as tracing because it's not because you're not fully following the sketch the goal is improvement and refinement not copy so it, it's really weird to see comments like that for the most part they could be joking but at the same time it's like I, I might as well address that now because that'll definitely uh, help in the future whether or not it it'll stop though it, it doesn't matter and the point is I've addressed it and that's uh, that's enough for me so if I get comments like that from now on I'll just be like all right well it is what it is you notice my colors are a lot more subdued this time. That, that was because I was kind of going for almost an icy, like, muted color look, which is unusual for my usual colors, which are usually very bright and vivid and very warm. Whereas this one is much more cooled down and uh, very uh, muted. Um, and I think that was really, really good because it, it gave a different feel to my usual artwork and it looked nice. I think I did a very good job with it and, uh, I had a great reference, um, but, uh, I kind of, uh, made a lot of changes to it because I, I didn't fully want to do the pose that they did and I wanted to kind of figure it out. As you can see, I used a selection pen to kind of, uh, refine everything in the, in the shadows here and use an airbrush to kind of get that gradient going. Again, use an airbrush and the selection pen. That is what all the uh, professionals use. Selection pen is hugely important in getting uh, everything to look very smooth. So keep that in mind whenever you're working with uh, anything. Uh, so I use a very bright, uh, pure white, which I don't usually do. And I think it turned out okay this time. It, it made it very moody. It was kind of nice. Also, I might sound different because I have to keep uh, pausing the recording every now and then. The reason being is I currently have a uh, kidney stone, so every now and then I'm in a lot of pain, so I have to uh, not try to record that. Luckily, right now I'm not in a lot of pain. My pain medication's working, so that's uh, that's good. I'd rather uh, not sound like a dying uh, baby while uh, recording. So again, whenever I do line art, I like to use very thin lines because I like to let my rendering stand out more than my line art. Even though I put a lot of effort into my line work, uh, I want the rendering to stand out more. But uh, you can use thicker lines. There's no actual rule to line art, much like there aren't that many rules to art. There are things you should follow and should definitely know, but there are times you can break the rules in art, but to break them, it's best to know them. So my advice would be learning how to do anything, uh, make very planned decisions and make decisions on what you want to do and make sure they're thought out. Um, 
I kind of changed a few things in the line art that ended up having to change back later because it ended up looking kind of weird. So that's, that's my bad. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, the point of sketching is to um, plan out the artwork and the point of line art is to refine. So again, just uh, keep that in mind whenever you're sketching and lining. Yeah, I do have a whole lot of fun doing line art though. It's very relaxing for me and it feels like I'm bringing everything to life. And it feels really good to like sit back and look at everything that you've done. It, it takes a while, but it's like really nice to do. The arms for this one were a little bit weird, but I, th I think they did all right. They're not too uh, funky, but they, they fit the proportion very well. I had to use the liquify tool to kind of uh, fix up the hair on this one because I ended up making it off center just a little bit and that was kind of awkward. Um, I've been trying this new way of doing eyes and I've been really enjoying the results. They're, they're very fierce and I like that a lot. Fierce eyes are definitely a whole lot of fun. Um, in terms of hair, uh, I'm still figuring out the rendering. I'm not the best at it, but I think I'll, I'll keep getting better. I'll keep trying and things will turn out all right. I think I got this. I like adding a headband in uh, Crony's hair just because I think it looks very cute. Um, Crony, Crony is a very uh, mature looking character uh, because the artist who uh, draws her is um, the artist who drew most of the Fate characters. And they all have, uh, people like to jokingly refer to uh, all of his uh, characters as having Saber Face. And as funny as that is, I do think it's a very unique looking face and art style, which is why he, that artist is so successful. Um, I like to do my own takes and renditions on characters, so usually um, I don't try to match the faces that uh, the original artist uses because where some people want to recreate what the artist did, I like to put my own spin on things personally and have tried to make it resemble the character as much as possible. And that's definitely a tricky balance to get right, but I definitely encourage trying it out. And through doing that, sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. My uh, cat girl crony is a great example of a miserable failure at making it look like the original character. So uh, that's one of those things that uh, you have to keep in mind the essence of the original character you're drawing if you want to get it to look like the character. It takes a little bit of extra work and a little bit of thought and sometimes whenever you're uh, trying too hard to make it your own, you can lose what was originally there. So that is a pitfall to look out for and watch. Um, when it comes to rendering this artwork, it happened extremely quickly just because I, I went for a, a more simple rendering and, and my biggest problem with this artwork is how I rendered the top. I think I did a, a terrible job at it. Um, personally, I think I could have done a lot better um, if I would have just done what I usually do, but I tried to do something different and it looked kind of bad in my opinion by the end because I, I just didn't do what I usually do. Again, like I said, we're going for those uh, muted colors. The only like really saturated part of this character is the eyes, the headband, and the glow behind the hair. Um, those were kind of the standout areas. So it's it's interesting. It's There's a lot of places to look here, but you have to make choices about what you want the focus to be. So yeah, everything else was simple rendering, then I decided I was going to go ham on the shirt and it ended up not matching the rest of the character. So, oops. I kind of went for like a three-toned layer on the, uh, on the, on the sweatpants. 
which I think looks pretty good. I was I was pretty proud of it. Did the seam, which was fun. Adjusted the color because it wasn't quite correct in my personal opinion. And now we're getting to the top. Ooh, the top is rough. <laughs> oh, it was too much. I also zoomed out really far to like get an idea of like blocking out the shapes, but that might have been a mistake as well. Because, uh,. I uh, didn't plan it out very well. Also, the hair was uh, super simplified in this one, which I think was actually really a good idea on my part. So here pretty soon we're gonna start adding some post-processing. Yeah, there we go. We're, I think we do the eyes. Yes, here we go, now we're doing the eyes. Most of the heavy lifting in my eyes is done by an add glow layer. So um, keep that in mind. It's like add glow is like the secret to a lot of my lighting. So here we are, we're adding some of the post processing, some add glow layers. We're gonna start doing a tonal curve and some level correction. I ended up adding the, uh, the clock halo that she has last minute a hard light layer, some blur, and some chromatic abrasion. And there we go. That's uh, this artwork, Crony Kardashian. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. I'll see you next time. Bye.